sequence, explicit formulas for geometric sequences. Let's see, find the explicit formula for the geometric sequence. So we have the following numbers here. We have 3, we have 15, we have 75, and we have 375. So the uh, very first number here, so our a of n, the very first number to sequence is 3. Now what we want to do is we want to figure out how we're going from, what's, what's our rule, how we're going from 3 to 15 to 75 to 375. You can see that the numbers are getting larger. So we're going to take the 15 and divide it by the first number, which is 3, which of course gives us 5. If we take 75 divided by 15, so that's the third number by the second number, that's also 5. If we were to take the 375 and divide that by 75, that would also be 5. So our rule is so far 3, that's our first number, the rule is 5. Now to finish it we always want to use n minus 1. So we have 3 times 5 times n minus 1. So let's go ahead and put the answer in here. So the first part of the sequence is 3 times. Now, Khan Academy is a little strange on this in that, you know, you have to put the second number in parentheses. You know, it, it's a positive. It shouldn't really be a parentheses there. But I find that without it, it sometimes marks it wrong. So try to put parentheses around the second number. So 3 times the 5 in parentheses. And now we want to bump up this n minus 1 and have this as an exponent. So what you want to use is this AB. And uh, let's see if we're going to type in n minus, now notice right here if we go n minus 1 it dropped on us. So another way of, of doing this one is to use the exponents again. So it's almost like using back-to-back -back exponents. You can also use the exponent key are the parentheses key for the exponents. So these are actually back-to-back -back parentheses, not exponents, but you have parentheses around the 5, you're going to put parentheses around the exponents. So we're going to call this n minus 1. So n, let me just use the tag here, n minus the 1. Notice it didn't drop here. Now there's other ways of typing that in there, but I find that if I keep that in parentheses with the uh, n minus 1 when I type everything stays as an exponent. So let's go ahead and check this and it's correct. Let's go to the next one. Okay so we have two students here Davia and Miguel were asked to find the explicit formula for the sequence 80, 40, 20, and 10. So if we look at this, this is our first, second, third, and fourth. Well right here the problem is with Miguel right off the bat is the uh, the first number here you know it, it's just showing the uh, 160 when it should be an 80 there and he doesn't have uh, an n minus 1 there but uh, we'll look at that a little bit deeper in a minute now this top one Davia has an 80 there which is fine now he says the distance between the numbers is one half well notice the numbers are getting smaller so we would actually go ahead and say, you know, 40 over 80, cross out the zero, so you get 4 over 8, divide this by 2, so this is 2 fourths, which is 1 half. If we come to the next one, we could say uh, 20 over 40, cross out the zero, so you get 2 fourths. And 2 over 4 is also 1 half. The last one we'd have 10 over 20, cross out the zeros, and it's 1 half. So looks like his is pretty good. Now, before we dismiss Miguel's, let's take a look at a couple things here. If we go to the first term here as a 1, if we put a 1 in here, what we're going to get is, and, and let me go ahead and erase this stuff right here. So let me just, you know, erase the stuff out of here. So if we were going to do uh, 160 times 1 half to the first power, so this becomes 160 over 1 
times one half. So that's uh, 160 over 2, which is 80, and the first term here is 80. So it looks good for that. Now, does it does it work for the other ones, though? That's the question. So if we come over here and we say the 160, so let me, let me get an ink here. So we say 160 over 1 times the 1 half, but this time we're going to take this to the second power. So this is going to be 160 over 1. Now, 1 half times 1 half. That's going to be 1 fourth. So that's uh, 160 over 4, and that's 40. So it, it works for the second term because, again, what we're doing is by positioning. First term here, we had the 1 half. 160 divided by uh, 2 is 80. Here we have a 2, so we go ahead and multiply this out and get 1 fourth, which eventually turns into 40. So now let's, let's erase this, and let's try the next one. So, so let's, let's uh, I'll go ahead and use the 3 in here. So let's go uh, 160 times the 1 half, but we're going to take this to the third power. So you're going to take 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, and that's going to be 1 over 8. It's not a very good 8. Let me make a better 8 here. So right here, this should be 1 over 8. So now we're going to say 160 over 1 times 1 over 8. That's 160 over 8. And you know what? That is 20. So that one worked as well. So let's go ahead, let's erase what we have, and let's test the last one. You know, let's see, does the last one give me 10? So let me get the ink back. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 160 over 1 times one half to the fourth. So we're going to say one half times one half times one half times one half. Well, two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is sixteen. So we got one sixty over one times one over sixteen because this is one half was the four times, one half, one half, and one half. So we get 160 over uh, 16, and that does become 10. So actually, they both work. So again, you with this, in this situation here, even though you might think, ah, you know, it, it does look like it doesn't work because the first term is it should be 80 and it's 160. You want to test it, and how you test it is by position. First term, then you put the second term in for the end, then the third term and the fourth term, and then do you get an 80, do you get a 40, do you get a 20, do you get a 10? So in this case here, both of these students are correct. Okay, now we want to find the explicit formula for the geometric sequence. So we go negative 25, negative 50, negative 100, negative 200. So we want to go ahead and identify our first term here. So it's negative 25, negative 50, negative 3, uh, negative 100, and then the fourth term is negative 200. So what is D of n? D of n is equal to negative 25 times, now what's our rule? What's our rule? I forget about the negative signs here. So we want to take, uh, you know, negative 50 and divide it by negative 25. So without the negative signs, you would see all oh, the numbers are getting large, you know, 25, 50, 100, 200. So like I said, if they're all negatives, you don't have to get too concerned with that because you can kind of see that the numbers themselves are getting larger here. So right here, we're going to take uh, 50 divided by 25. We all know that's 2 because 50 cents uh, divided by 25 cents was 2 quarters in there. And the double negatives make it a positive 2. So it looks like our rule should be 2. Let's take a look at the next one. We got a negative 100, and we're dividing by negative 50. 
So uh, the double negatives turn to a positive, so 100 divided by 50 is also 2. Let's take the last one, a negative 200 over a negative 100. Well, the double negatives turn to a positive, so 200 divided by 100 is also 2. So our rule would be 2, but again, you always got to finish with the n minus 1. So it's negative 25 times 2, and then the n minus 1. So we're going to uh, put in the uh, negative 25 first, because that's our very first term. Remember like we talked about before, we put down our time signs, but Khan Academy is kind of weird about this. You have to use these uh, parentheses. So I'm going to place in a positive 2 because there's no change in the signs. Even though there are always negatives, everything was being multiplied by a positive 2. Okay, now I want to put in my exponent, which is n minus 1, so I'm going to use the AB key. But again, I'm going to use the uh, parentheses there because that keeps everything on the same line. If you don't do that, when you start typing the n, when you go minus 1, that always drops, and then you got to go back and remove it, and you know, why take all that time? Just put parentheses there, and then just go n minus 1. So we're going to say negative 25 times positive 2 in parentheses, and then n minus 1 in parentheses. Okay, back to two students here, Hiroki and Mapia. We're asked to find explicit formula for the sequence. So let's take a look at the sequence here. So the first number is 125, then it's 25, uh, then it goes down to 5, and then it goes down to uh, 1 for the fourth term here. So the third term and then the fourth term. So right here, we start off with 625. So let's let's do it like we did before. Before we dismiss it, because you know we we like to see the 125 in the first position, but you know don't don't you know say oh that's wrong at the start. Test it out and see. So we're going to say uh, one fifth. We're going to place the n with a one because the n is the positioning. So when we actually work this out. We get uh, 625 over five. And 625 divided by 5 is 125, so that one is correct. Now, let's go check the next one. So the second one, let's check the second term out. And I also want to write these a little bit better here, too. So let me go ahead and erase these. And let's make these a little bit better here. So let's make this a 3 and a 4. So our second term now, so we're going to take the 625 over the 1 times the 1 fifth, and it should be a 5, not a 2. So let's write this as 1 fifth. But this time we want to square that 1 fifth. So I'm going to take 1 fifth times 1 fifth, so that's 1 over 25. So we have 625 over 1 times 1 over 25. So from here you got 625 over 25, and that actually reduces down to 25. So the second term does give me a 25 at the end, like it's supposed to. So the first term we did, we got the 125. The second term, remember, we have to take 1 fifth times 1 fifth to get to 125. That reduces down to 25. So that one is correct as well. So let's go on to the third one. So let's go to this 625. And put the one-fifth down, but this time, let's go ahead and multiply that three times. So one-fifth times one-fifth times one-fifth. So what happens here is you get one over 125. So we got the 625 over one. This one-fifth to the third power becomes one over uh, 125. So you got the 625 over the 125. Well, what happens is 625 divided by 125 is 5. 
so it does work. So the third term, when I put a put a three in here, and I multiply these three one fifths, I do get uh, one over one over one twenty five. When I multiply, I get six twenty five one twenty five, which reduces down to five. So that one is correct. So let's erase that. Okay, let's take a look at the fourth term here. So the fourth term we have uh, 625 over 1 times the 1 fifth, but remember, we want to take that to the fourth power. So we want to take the 1 fifth four times. So this is 5 times 5 is 25. And you see this is also 25 here. So 25 times 25 is 1 over, and let me make that a better 1. So what you're going to get is 1 over 625. So 625 over 625, which is 1, and that's correct. So it looks like she's correct. She's good. Let's move on to the next formula. So let's let's see if the next student is correct. So here, start off with the 125, and uh, what we want to do is we want to put a one in here. So we're going to take uh, the 125 over one. We're going to take the one fifth to the first. So we come here. We multiply this, it stays at 1 fifth, so this is going to be uh, 125 over 1 times 1 over 5. So this is uh, 125 over 5, and that becomes 25. But you see the first term, the first term should be 125, not 25, but 125. It's wrong. And if we were to do the second term, let's check one more. Let's say if we do the second term, is that going to give us a wrong answer? Well, let's see. We're going to take the 125 over 1 times the 1 fifth. But remember, we're going to square this. So we're going to take 1 fifth times 1 fifth, which is one actually 25. So you got the 125 over 1 times 1 over 25 so that's 125 over 25 which becomes 5 so the second term should be 5 but it's 25 so really the only student here is correct is the first student